Hi, I'm Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at PFSense with HA Proxy. Specifically, we're going to be using HA Proxy as a reverse SSL proxy to machines internally on our network. We have a number of machines from web servers. Uh, we have Bitwarden hosted internally, for example. There's no access to it whatsoever externally from the internet. There's no DNS records resolving. The DNS records are resolved locally on the network using PFSense. But rather than installing the certificate on every single machine that we have on the network, um, we don't need to do that. We can just install it on PFSense and use HA Proxy then to um, so the certificates resolve and we don't have to click, yeah, proceed now, warning, this site is not safe and everything like that. Um, this is nothing to do with Let's Encrypt, by the way. There is a way of using HA proxy with Let's Encrypt to so Let's Encrypt can automatically generate the certificates and then you can use HA proxy in exactly the same way to um, proxy to machines on your local NAN at LAN. But as I say, we're not doing that. Um, in fact, that's what prompted this video. I recently saw a video from our friends over at Lawrence Technologies. Tom Lawrence did a video on using HA proxy with um, Let's Encrypt. You can generate the uh, secure, certificate, secure certificates automatically with Let's Encrypt. Uh, and then you can use HA proxy to direct the traffic that way. This is not to do with, nothing to do with Let's Encrypt in any way whatsoever. If you are interested in setting up with Let's Encrypt, I'll leave a link to the video that um, Tom Lawrence did. He's done a perfectly good video on how to do it um, and step-by-step -step walkthrough using the various providers that you can do for Let's Encrypt. Um, like I say, we're not doing that, we're using our own certificate. Anyway, before we proceed, if you'd like to hire us for any projects, if you head over to our website at sheridan.co.uk, You'll find some information about us, what we do, and the services we offer, as well as some of the clients that we work with. You'll also find a Hire Us button at the top of the page that you can click. If you click this, you'll be presented with a form, leave some details, uh, your name, your email address, what you're looking for, and we'll get back to you on whether we can help you or not. Um, now that's out of the way, let's head over to PFSense, log in, and we'll get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and log into uh, PFSense. Nope, get off. Um, right, okay, so we're logged in. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into make sure that we've got the HA proxy package installed. So if we go into system and then package manager. We have some crap installed, but we don't have... Um, HA proxy installed, so we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, where is it? HA proxy, let's go ahead and install. So as you can see, that's now installed, so we need to um, go through and set up HA Proxy. So, services, HA Proxy. So, HA Proxy is loaded. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a custom certificate. So if you're using your own custom certificate for this, um, you're going to need to import the certificate to use it. So let's go into system, cert manager, go into certificates. Um, at this point we need to add a new certificate. And I'm gonna import an existing certificate. So at this stage you need to paste your certificate in. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, pause this video while I do this. Okay, so I've imported my certificate. So what we're gonna do I've set a host well, I've set my host file so DNS locally resolves to the um, 
internal IP address of pfSense. So if I do ping test.sheridan.co.uk, as you can see, that resolves to the IP address of pfSense. And I've also set up test2.sheridan.co.uk, which also does it. Um, so now we've got that far and we know that we're resolving properly. Um, we can go ahead and set up our backends. So basically the back end is the server that we're forwarding to uh, and the front end is the address that we're listening on where we're going. So it's gonna set up a back end. Um, add a new back end. You can call this whatever. So test um, server list. Let's create a new entry for that. Run it active. Call it test again. And um, I'm going to forward this to one of our internal servers, um, the development web server, for example. So we basically um, we've got this backend called test um, forward to address and port. 10.1.10.130, which is an internal web development server. Port 443, encrypt SSL. Now, we don't need any of this. Um, we can go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna add a second backend. Test two. Um, I'll forward this to our Unify server. Again, enable SSL. We don't need any of this. So that's our backend setup. Now if um, I go ahead and go into our test servers. So this is one of our test servers. If we look at the certificate, more information, it's a self-send certificate. On the same with our Unify box, self-send certificate. So now we need to set up the front end. And this is the interface that you're listening on, so it's easy enough to adjust this for externally, just select the one interface. Uh, I say this is all internal, so I'm gonna put it on the one inter uh, the LAN interface. So we're going to add a new front end. My front end. Listen address. So I'm gonna change this to the LAN interface. Um, now for the port, if I set this to 10.4.4.3 for example, enable SSL offloading, um, max connections we can leave, the HTTP, HTTPS offloading we can leave. Um, I've just set this port to 10.4.4.3, I'll show you why in a second. So now we need to set up the access control list, so this is basically um, Let's go through and do it anyway. So for our test, the test ACL host starts with for the expression, and obviously you can change these to match it however you want. And then host starts with test.sheridan.co.uk, and we want to add our second one in. Host starts with test2.sheridan.co.uk so that basically sets the incoming ACL up so now for the actions part we need to set this up and it's got examples here like it does under the ACL so for the actions part we need to add a new action we want to use a backend for the action uh, conditional ACL names now these basically match the name of the ACL that you've set up here so 
test ACL and I want that to use the test back end. And again I want to use back end for my action. But this time we're going to be using test 2 ACL which matches this. And then I want to send that to test 2. Um, default back end you can do that if you want. I'm just going to leave it out for this example. So with that matching and set up, as you can see, you've got test ACL, action, conditional name test ACL goes to back end, test 2 ACL matches test 2.sheridan.co.uk, uh, and one use back end, test 2 ACL again, so it matches that, and we send it to back end test 2. Let's go ahead and save that. Apply the changes. One thing that I did forget to mention there when you're setting your um, front end up is to go scroll down to certificate and ensure that you've selected the uh, certificate that you imported earlier. So as you can see, ours is a wildcard certificate that I imported, which is start at sharon.co.uk, which, which is how I was able to use test and test two because it was a wildcard certificate. Um, just figured you might mention that. I did forget to do that during the um, actual setup process then. I'll flick back. So we set up and we're listening on 10.1.10.253, which is the address of this on port 10443. Um, now we need to go and enable HA proxy. There's a couple of settings that we need to do in here. So we need to enable it. Set the maximum number of connections. I'm just going to set this to 10. Um, and it does show your memory usage, on, depending on what you set the connections to. Uh, there's only me connecting to this, so I'm just going to set it to 10. Um, number of processes, I'm going to leave that 1. Uh, defaults to 1 if left blank, before CPU goes detected. So you can set this up. Um, if you're going to use CARP, if you want to enable stats, um, I'm not going to go into that for this video, I'm just going to show you how to use HA proxy. Uh, you can set up mail notifications. Now this is the uh, other important bit, because when we purchase a certificate, it's a 2048 signed certificate, we, and uh, the default's 124, we need to change that. So that allows us to use the maximum encryption in our certificate. Let's go ahead and save that. And that's it, it's enabled. So now if we go to So if we go to test.sheridan.co.uk call on 10443. This is our internal web server. Um, it's a different page just because obviously it's a web server and it's detected the name. This is a default page. Uh, and if we go to test two, we should get our Unify server. So now as you can see we have our Unify server and you know the certificate's completely valid, verified by Digicert and if we do that again fully valid certificate. So as you can see simply by using HA proxy and um, internally resolving the domain names to point at our PFSense box. Uh, we can easily make sure we've got valid certificates and we don't need to keep messing about installing certificates on other boxes. Um, now obviously when I did that it's coming up with an invalid certificate because that's the address of our PFSense box and I didn't put the port in after it. So if you're not familiar with HA Proxy I hope that helps and it gets you started in what you're doing. As I say, with the Let's Encrypt certificates, which um, are really useful, I'll leave a link to the description of the video that Tom did, um, which I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video. If you do like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Um, consider subscribing to the channel and also if you hit the notifications icon, you'll get the notifications of any videos that we do. And don't forget, if you would like to hire us, head across to our website, click on the hire us button. Uh, the website is sheridan.co.uk.